first film was made in 1961 by the BBC Club Cine Section. And it was made in order that one could portray or provide a documentary of a period of 24 hours in the life of Penrith. It starts at midnight and ends at midnight. It's so entitled, as you can see, Round the Town Clock. Throughout the night, there are quite a number of people in Penrith still working. The telephone exchange is one where a full 24-hour service is maintained. The night operators and the supervisor are in attendance all through the night. Some of the machinery can only be worked on when it's closed down from its normal usage. And here is an example. This is undercutting of a commutator at the BBC transmitting station at Skelton. Early in the morning, the milkmen load their vans and prepare to make their deliveries. The news agents, they open early to get the newspapers out and the newsboys, they start their rounds quite early pedalling off on their bicycles to push their newspapers through your letterbox. The switching stations, the power supplies, they all indicate that people are getting up as the load begins to come on. And, of course, there we have people getting up, getting ready in the early morning to go to work before they have their breakfast. And, of course, we mustn't forget the housewife. She gets up, too, and prepares the breakfast for those that are going out to work. The newspaper deliveries are well on now. It's still not very light, but light enough. Many of you will, I'm sure, recognize some of the people that appear in this film, both in the factories and in their homes. There's breakfast ready now. Milkman's father on with his rounds. Now he's got nearer to his customers.
breakfast over and a final cup of tea before leaving to get off to work. There, to be seen off by little granddaughter as well. Gives a nice kiss to granddad. And then, as he goes down the street, a last and final wave of the hand. Birds are having their breakfast as well, and through Penrith goes one of those huge loads that caused so much traffic difficulty, or did in 1961. Tuesday, market day. <coughs> and on the market, the stalls have been erected, and now the market traders are all arriving to lay out their wares. And here is another industry. I wonder how many of you realize that in Penrith, there's a cabinet makers where the carving crafts are still carried out by real craftsmen. And carving a ball and claw foot, a piece of furniture. In the market, the traders have now set out their stalls and it is interesting to notice the difference between now and 1961. Market day and the auction market is in full swing as well. There's a semicircle of cars parked Market Square. Rather a different arrangement than it is today. That picture, I think, should have come later on in the film. It's not really the back end of the day. It's actually the beginning. The laundry. One of the larger businesses in Penrith. And there, throughout the day, the clothes are washed, the bed linen and so on is laundered and pressed and ironed, the shirts are pressed and ironed and washed and so on. All quite a complicated process. Large washing machines, rather bigger than domestic ones we see. Penrith Quark. How many remember that counter? That's before the days of self-service. That's in the days of service. And short back and sides were actually short back and sides in 1961.
the West Cumberland Farmers Trading Society, one of the large farm cooperatives, the largest farm cooperative, in fact. And, uh, of course, as we know from the news this week, it's uh, just become even larger. The traders on the market have now laid out their stalls, and we see the old, now unfamiliar prices, five shillings and eleven pence. And uh, the representative from the town hall is uh, going round to collect his uh, money from the stall holders. Oh, yes. Police noticed no waiting. And there is one of them who's noticed it. Yes. And again. And they work 24 hours a day, too. market is now in full swing and uh, the exchange of news and gossip is uh, going on as it has been in markets all over the world ever since there have been markets. And there's a the young customer. One of the newer uh, firms in Penrith is Beacon Trailers. It started off, of course, originally by building trailers and has, has developed considerably since that time. Even in 1961, it had developed well beyond the building of trailers. And now, in 1977, there sphere of activities covers almost every branch of farming and indeed building. Back to see how they're going on in the laundry and now the things are ready for uh, ironing, pressing or whatever we call it. Still going on, there's a large calendaring machine for sheets. That makes things a bit easier. And of course, when we come to uh, things like shirts, we have uh, rather clever machinery which helps there too. This shows how you do a shirt. See, it goes together on there all very nice on the little stand. And then, there. Something dry them by hand. <coughs> and there's something that we don't see many of today. When it comes to folding up shirts, how's this for folding them? They're folding and bagged. And 
collars, or they get special treatment, and so do cuffs. And the head of the laundry, we've just seen. The school children, they are now going home to lunch, and so the lollipop man looks after them as they cross the road. Brunswick Road looks a bit strange with cars facing in both directions. Richardson Sawmills. There's the gas engine being started up. Drive the machinery, there it is. This is after the lunch break. And now with the power on, the saws are back into use, and the wood's been cut up making fencing posts by the look of it. And that was in 1961 too. And the children now go back to school. And uh, of course, today is auction day. There are some of the cattle. Those are, of course, the rather picturesque Highland cattle. One doesn't see many of them in the show. These are more like the ones one sees in the uh, in the market, rather. And there they are, going to the under the auctioneer's hammer. Yes, Redmond's, the plastic factory, another relatively new factory in Penrith in 1961, turning out a quite diverse range of goods. Surprising how little we really know about the activities of so many of these factories that we have here. Beneath the streets of Penrith, there's a whole maze of cables and pipes carrying water, sewage, electricity, telephones, gas, and so on. And here we stop to have a look at the Electricity Authority repairing and replacing its cables beneath the streets of Penrith. The afternoon is now wearing on, and uh, the later customers are all visiting the market, and of course the stall holders are thinking seriously of uh, 
packing up. And there at the railway station, an express goes thundering through, and in the station yard, one sees the coal wagons, again, something which is no longer there, and the cells in the field beside the station, with, incidentally, a large water tank there for refilling the steam engines that were then, no longer necessary. And uh, the, the uh, buses and the farms, and the buses and fa uh, The children in the playgrounds are there. And it's surprising to think that that was 17 years ago. So quite a number of those uh, children are now grown up and have families of their own. Now it's time to go home. The children have finished their work for the day. Yes, the stall holders are packing up now on the market. And the council workmen are now removing the covers and taking the stalls down so that the Great Docker can return to being a car park for another week. All the litter blowing about on the market, but that will be cleared away in good time. And it's half past five. And staff are leaving the factories. Just the board employees are arriving back at their workshops, ready for knocking off. There they are, that's the end of the day for them, but Penrith doesn't close down yet. Oh no, it doesn't close down at all. Yes, the gas works. The electricity people have closed down, but the gas works are still going. There are the retorts at the gas works. Again, something which has now gone. We get our gas by an entirely different means. There's a little electric railway that carries the coke from the retorts. The lamps are being put out by the excavations in readiness for darkness. And the time is six o'clock. The 
street lights begin to come on all over the town. And now the evening activities start. And this is the Tynefield Centre, where night classes or evening classes take place, where one can fill in some of one's free time with various pursuits. Games, too. Or, of course, one can learn a language. Good night. Yes, another of the classes, dancing. But work hasn't ceased altogether. The Rebel Garage on Brunswick Road, there, the buses that have been out on the roads all day are cleaned up and prepared for tomorrow. The housewife, of course, is preparing the evening meal. Not only the housewife, but in the cafes and restaurants, meals are still being prepared. One can go and get a meal at any time. One can also learn cooking. The lights in the shop windows are on. And, of course, some prefer to watch the box. Some familiar faces on the box, but they look a bit younger than they do today. There are other activities take place during the evening. One can go out to the cinema, one can go to the Savoy Yards, and here we've just sneaked into the Savoy Yards. That must be the pirates. Yes, the television is still on. Of course, there is another alternative. What of the other amateur group in uh, Penrith, the Penrith Players? And, of course, you might like a snack. You might be hungry. So, the snack bars are open. It's 8 o'clock, 5 minutes past 8. And there one can have a snack and some music. Some shops apparently are open too. That 
1961. And of course, so are the cafes. Penrith used to have, I think it was 38 pubs. Well, there aren't 38 now, but uh, there weren't 38 in 1961 either. But uh, there were a number of pubs, and uh, they provided somewhere to go, and the people in them, of course, they worked on until late at night. wife is washing up the dishes again. That will be after supper. Well, all these activities that one has seen taking place in 24 hours in Penrith, they take place in almost every 24 hours in Penrith, and it's quite surprising how much there is going on all the time. And for this film, we have to thank all those people who permitted us to film in their premises and those who permitted them to, us to film in their homes as well. And so we thank them all. And a very good night to you.